Well, hello my YouTube fam. It is the Notorious Bogey and Emily here, and we are gonna start with our second AMA, which is Ask Me Anything, that I posted on Instagram. We got a bunch of awesome questions right here that we're going to address. And a lot of them are similar, so I'm gonna lump a lot of the similar questions into one, and just keep in mind, I'm going to put all the questions down below so you could click through whichever ones you wanna hear the answers to, just in case it's a little too long, you don't wanna listen to the whole thing, which I totally get. So the first question, I like this question. What is the best advice for someone who really wants to own a boy? And it's hashtag dreambird. I'm assuming she just means like a bogey boy. My best advice, uh, it's a, my best advice is to just do as much research as possible, ask as many people as possible what their experience is like with whatever bird you want. Uh, so good job for asking me. But uh, I would say you just have to weigh the pros and cons of owning a parrot and in doing that, you just need to be informed about what those pros and cons are. So I always tell people, if you want a really cuddly, affectionate animal, you know, maybe don't get a parrot. Or if you want an animal that's not as messy, it doesn't cause allergies, it's not loud, um, it doesn't bite, maybe don't go for a parrot. But there's, there's a lot of advice I could give you. I could actually just make a whole YouTube video on this subject, but my biggest advice would be to do your own research, do as much as possible, as well as Try to find a volunteer situation, a shelter, or a friend with that type of bird that you can go visit and spend a lot of time with that species and really see if it's a fit. There's a lot of questions pertaining to Bogey being an older brother because as you may know, or as you may not know, I am pregnant. This is a big topic for us because I'm pretty passionate about how people treat animals with change and I know a lot of animals get rehomed whenever there's a new family member, especially a baby. Bogey has had a little bit of a history of biting. So of course, of course there's some concerns raised. Yeah, talking about you buddy. Bogey doesn't know. I don't think Bogey knows that I'm pregnant. He probably senses some differences. I mean, he's extremely intelligent and I know they can sense things that we can't necessarily see. But, um, you can't go on my shoulder. Bogey's not allowed on my shoulder. But, I, I yeah, I can't necessarily speak for Bogey. I'm not sure if he knows, if he senses that I'm pregnant, but um, we're definitely excited and we have a good plan about what we wanna do. And basically, my whole plan is, since we live in a one bedroom condo, it's also kinda crazy with a baby and a parrot, we're probably gonna move Bogey's cage out of our bedroom and into the living room so that Bowie doesn't see me, you know, nursing the baby 24 seven. Right off the bat, cause we're gonna try to get Bogey used to the baby in a good controlled way where he's not seeing me with the baby 20, 20, 24 seven. Doesn't even make sense, but yes, yeah, so we have a plan and I'm sure as uh, things happen and evolve, I'm gonna figure out what's working and what's not working. I hope that answers that question. This is a weird question. Did you go through fertility treatment? <laughs> I did not. How long did your parrot bite you after your purchase? Okay, so Bogey was allegedly four months old when I got him. I am now starting to suspect that he was older and I was kind of played a little bit. Uh, I'll never really know the truth, but I think Bogey started becoming aggressive around one and a half to two years old, if my calculations are correct. Because when I did get Bogey, he was very cuddly and he was very baby-like. Um, and I know parrots can be baby-like for a decent amount of time. So this gives me kind of an ina inaccurate time frame of when I actually got him versus like when he started attacking. The first time he really attacked me was he was on my shoulder and he tried to go for my eye and I thought it was an accident. I was like, no way did this bird try to bite me. I took it all personally. Little did I know I got a galah and his wings were clipped and I was completely unaware of his body language. It was a whole thing. So. I would say it was about a year and a half when he started getting really aggressive and then we really had to take some 
steps to intervene because it was like, I, I was like, I don't know how I could live with this for 50 years, him attacking my face because his wings grew out and everything. So someone said, Michael hates to shower. I've tried everything, what do I do? This is a long excl explanation, explanation. But basically, if your bird hates to shower, chances are, well, I don't wanna speak for this person, but chances are this person maybe pushed their bird too quickly into the shower. What I always tell people to do is if you're, if you're able, put your bird somewhere where they could see you go in the shower, but you don't have to force them in. And what I've noticed with birds is the more you, if, if you have a good relationship with your bird, of course, if your bird doesn't feel comfortable around you, they're not, this isn't gonna work. Um, put your bird somewhere either on the counter or on the top of the shower where they can see you. My alarm just went off. But they are not forced into the water. And slowly over time, steam will feel good, they'll feel relaxed, they'll see that you're enjoying the shower, and then you can, you know, gradually bring them in if you can sense that they want to come in. Bogey, Bogey kind of would like, he would be on the counter and then after a couple of weeks, he, he wanted to be on the top of the shower. And then a couple of weeks, he would kind of like, his body language would be kind of forward, like, oh, can you pick me up? So I'd pick him up and then I put him in the shower, not in the shower, but just in with him. And then he kind of started like feeling the water on his feathers. So he started doing his little like showering time dance. And that's kind of the progression. I read somewhere that Galahs hate water. So I was like, oh, they hate water. And I found out when I was doing dishes one day that he really liked baths. So, you know, it's just a slow progression and that's always the theme for things with parrots. It's, it's something that just needs patience and time. How much of your life is committed to your bird? It's a great question. Uh, a lot of my life is committed to you, huh? My life is very much committed to this bird. I spend every day feeding, cleaning, training, and of course there's variations. I don't recommend people spend all day every day with their birds. That can lead to other issues of, you know, pair bonding, which isn't necessarily good, but overall, parrots are a huge responsibility and Bogey is definitely one of the biggest joys in my life. So yes, I spend a lot of time with Bo. So someone asked, how do you think Bogey will handle the baby? And I don't know if I really went over this in the prior question, but I think Bogey is always very, very curious about what I am interested in. And sometimes this is like a good thing and other times it can be a bad thing. For instance, like he can hyper focus on something to the point where it's like obsessive. And I've noticed he used to be like that with men. He used to be overly obsessive and then it turned aggressive. So I'm gonna try to kind of work backwards and I'm going to change the antecedent because in the training ABCs antecedent and then behavior and then consequence that's kind of the training ABCs I am going to just really focus on how Bowie's introduced to this baby in a very safe and controlled way so it, it never gets out of hand and so we can just kind of squash whatever aggression there may be but I don't necessarily think Bogey is automatically gonna be aggressive. I just think that it's gonna be an adjustment. It's gonna be like, it just like if I had a two-year-old or three-year-old, me making sure that that two and three-year-old doesn't feel neglected and, you know, I don't wanna use the word jealous, but doesn't feel bird jealous and doesn't, uh, it's tough, man. I, I don't know, that's bottom line. I don't know how Bogey's gonna react, but I've, Spent a lot of time thinking about it, that's for sure. <laughs> okay, next question. Someone asked me, how am I prepared for a long time commitment, mentally, physically, and emotionally? That's a very sweet question. I actually feel very prepared for a long time commitment. I think they're asking me about the baby, I'm assuming, but um, having bogey, I think, has really prepared me for a baby. I know a baby is gonna be a whole different thing. It's gonna be a bigger challenge. I'm not gonna be sleeping as much or if at all. I think Bogey has really prepared me for the best. And as well as my husband, we've worked out a lot of just like nitty gritty arguments about even behavior and discipline and like who does what with Bogey that we've learned how to just do all that together so well. 
I think it's a huge stepping stone for a baby. Physically, I'm like definitely feeling pregnant, but I'm exercising every day. I'm stay, trying to stay in shape. And um, what is it, mentally? Mentally, physically, and emotionally. Emotionally, I'm good. I think there's days where I'm like, oh my gosh, how am I gonna do this? And then there's other days where I'm like, you know what, I'm so prepared for this. I'm, I'm almost 30. I've lived a good life. I have no regrets. Uh, Bogey's trained me well in parenthood. So he's chewing my chair right now. Hey, can you not chew that chair? My bird is so clingy when he's out. I love spending time with him, but how do I get work done? So that's a great question. You don't want a clingy bird. I think the biggest thing that I preach on a soapbox is teaching your bird independence. It's huge. You gotta teach your bird independence. The gist of that is you wanna create an environment for your bird that's healthy enough for them to enjoy time away from you as well as time with you. So that means putting enrichment toys around your house, perches, and making their cage an enjoyable place to be, and feeding them in that cage, and providing foraging in their cage. And you just wanna create a very enriched, uh, healthy atmosphere for your parrot or for your bird. So it's not just all about you because what happens when it's all about you and that bird is that you and the bird create a pair bond, which is very unhealthy because in the wild, if there's a pair bond, usually that parrot mates for life with that other bird. If it's with a human, that bird is able to naturally do the things that parrots do together in a mated bond. So then your bird's gonna end up being frustrated and we're gonna have behavioral issues and aggression and all sorts of drama that we don't need in our lives, right? So independence, that's how you get work done. <laughs> how long have I had Bogey? I will have had Bogey for four years in November. So right before I have this baby, I will have had Bogey for four years. Do you wanna come down? Do you wanna be in the video? Four years with you, buddy. It's a long time. Here's to like 50 more, huh? Cheers. What is Bogey's favorite treat? Bogey, do you wanna answer that? I think Bogey's favorite treat would have to be either safflower seeds or walnuts or pine nuts. Those are his favorite treats. He goes nuts for them. What if your baby will be allergic to birds? That's a really great question too and it's honestly been a fear of mine because I've heard horror stories of like people having to rehome parrots or cats because of this issue. If this ever became an issue, we would have to find a way to have Bogey outside or in a different part of the house and we'd probably have to move, honestly. That's how serious I am about Bogey. Do you wanna go up to your perch? Yeah. <laughs> That's what would have to happen. I would never get rid of bogey and we'd just have to figure it out. Get some crazy HEPA air filters or bogey would have to be like in a different part. I already said this, but it just frazzles my brain to even have to conceive if the baby's allergic to a bird. I'm like, nope, it's not gonna happen. Your thought on annual avian blood test to check your internal parrot's health. I I think there's, there's nothing wrong with getting an annual blood work checkup. I used to do that with Bogey. I was actually talking to Hillary Hankey from the Avian Behavior Lab, or it was Stephanie who was talking to Hillary Hankey, and she was talking about how it can be a little bit unnecessary if your bird is showing all the healthy signs, you know, its weight is the same and its poops are normal and everything's checking out. I would say my thoughts personally are that I would go for like a once every two to three year checkup. Um, in California though, I do have to do like a physical in order to board bogey at my vet. You just wanna stand up there and squawk? But it, that doesn't require blood work. So blood work can be quite stressful for birds, uh, no matter how desensitized they are. It's, it, you know, takes a vet grabbing and pulling blood out. I'm not against it. Um, but I don't think every single year is necessary if your bird is showing healthy signs. Okay, anything about the harness? So I love the aviator harness. That's the harness that I use. Unfortunately, I never really trained Bogey properly to go into the harness. So there's been a bit of an issue with that where he's not a fan of the harness. I can put it on him but I would never instruct people to do it the way I did because he doesn't love it and it kind of can create 
an issue with trust, especially if a person doesn't have a good bond with their bird, the last thing I would want is for that person to cram a harness on that bird. And it can be dangerous. It can hurt their wings and their legs and it can be uncomfortable under their, under their wings if there's like, if they're molting, touching my armpits. So I, I do know a lot of people who have properly trained their birds with the harness and they've done a really, really good job. So if you do get a harness, get the aviator harness, I'll link it below and get on the training. And even if it takes a year, do it properly because you won't regret it. But it is the safest and I think most effective harness out there. What does bogey smell like? <laughs> That's a funny question. Bogey just smells so good. I sometimes like to hear, let's see if he'll let me do it. I like to just like grab his head. He kind of like will bite my thumb, but it's like a play bite. And I just smell him. It's super weird. Cock two people get it. Anyone who's not a bird person who's watching, I doubt there's anyone who's not a bird person watching my ask me anything about being a Glaw owner, but he just smells powdery. <laughs> I don't know. Someone told me their Glaw smelled like cotton candy. You definitely don't smell like cotton candy. Okay, you want, you want more smells? Cringy, I'm being cringy. I'm from Australia and just wondering how you can have a native bird as a pet. Breeding cockatoos in America is legal. I know there's different laws on different species that are going extinct and whatnot. Endangered is the better word used to describe that. But yeah, there's a lot of breeders in America that breed galahs and breed, um, you know, the Indonesian cockatoos, all sorts of birds. Unfortunately, when I got bogey, I was not very educated on any of that, so I don't know who Bogey's breeder is. Can you please tell us more about Bo's diet? That is a wonderful question. So, okay. I can go over the just evolution of Bogey's diet really quickly. I got Bogey, he's on all seed diet. Then I switched him to the Bird Trick seasonal, no, no, no. Then I went to Rowdy Bush because I knew that seeds weren't good. Then I did the Bird Tricks diet and then I tried to get him to go to Harrison's, but he wouldn't, so I stuck with Tops. Tops and Bird Tricks pellets are the same thing. Um, and I'd make my own chop. And then I kind of got in touch with Luann from Parents R Us. She sent me this awesome, beautiful box of goodies. And um, Bogey still eats some of that stuff. It's, it's, I, I'll link it below. So right now, Bogey has tops. He has the oat groat mix that I will link below because I can't think of, oh, it's like China Prairie. Uh, I don't remember. I need to, I need to link it below. But, um, and then I am trying to switch Bogey over to Harrison's because I really like the ingredients of Harrison's. I, I really like that there are fortified vitamins and minerals in it because I do worry sometimes about Bogey not getting enough vitamin D. I am trying to get him on that pellet. It's been really hard because once Bogey is on a certain pellet, it's really hard to get him to try something else. So I am actually working on a conversion diet YouTube video because it's taking me like three different tries to get Bogey on this new pellet. He likes the flavor of this Harrison's pellet but he just doesn't like the texture. So I've mixed it in with his chop, he eats it, he likes it, but as soon as it's in like the hard square, he won't touch it. So that's kind of what I'm trying to work through. So someone asked, what made you get a rosy breasted cockatoo and are they hard to come by in the US? But basically, I had a huge lump of cash in my car, I was gonna get a budgie. In visiting <laughs> the budgie, because the budgie's too young to take home, I fell in love with Bogey and the parrot, or the, bird shop owner heard that I had a bunch of cash in my car and was like, I'll offer you a great deal. If you leave today with the bird, I'll give you a cage. It was way too small. And I impulse bought bogey. Um, the only experience I had with galahs prior to that uh, was at the LA Zoo where they do this amazing bird show and they have this like crazy galah come out and do this cute little skit and with a bunch of trained vocals on cue and then the bird flies to the audience member with the dollar bill on their hand and I always thought that bird is so cool and I could never imagine myself getting anything like that and here I am with Bogey to this day and he can do pretty much all those tricks that that bird at the zoo did so I'm pretty proud of him. Is the baby gonna dress like his brother at some point? <laughs> I love that. 
Definitely. Real men wear pink. Real men wear pink. I'll definitely put some pink on that kid and Bogey and him will match. I'm sure it'll be adorable. Was Bogey my first bird? No, I had several parakeets. My first bird ever was a cockatiel. I had him for about eight years. He was, he flew away actually and got eaten by a hawk. So that was traumatic, very traumatic. And then I had a parrotlet. So yeah, that those were my, I probably had um, eight other birds before Bogey. They're just small birds, which still counts. Small birds matter too. I loved those small birds. I had a budgie that would actually go to college with me. I, would, I commuted and I would take the budgie to college with me. I loved that budgie. What do you do with Bogey when you're on vacation? So I either have Bogey stay with my mom, my mother-in-law, or I board him at my local vet. So how did you train him leashless and were you scared he wouldn't come back? Any close calls? Uh, so this is free flying. Someone else asked a question of what my thoughts were on free flight and I'll definitely address this. I trained Bogey how to be free flighted, free flighted, uh, with a lot. I, it's like, that's a big question. A lot of it had to do with diet. A lot of it had to do with uh, trainers I was talking to. A lot of it was recall training. This is a very, very specific training program to get your bird to go outside. So don't take your bird outside unless specifically trained to do so because something bad will happen. Your bird will get scared and fly away. It happens almost every day I get messages that their bird's lost. They took it outside, they thought, you know, it wouldn't fly away. What happens is if your bird doesn't know how to fly, doesn't have the skills to fly verticals and down and all this stuff, it, it gets scared and so it's flying higher and higher and the bird doesn't know how to come down. So when I took Bogey out, his recall was pretty much perfect. My fear was that there was some other factor that would hurt Bogey like a raptor. It's a tough one because there's nothing better than seeing your bird fly outside. It brings tears to your eyes. It fills your heart up to the point where you feel like it's gonna explode. It's the best thing ever. He keeps chewing on the chair. It's not good. Um, however, it is very dangerous and there are major risks involved with free flying. And my biggest, biggest, biggest fear is raptors, of course. Um, I actually haven't been free flying a lot just because of the anxiety that I have been getting, thinking about how it's my, his safety is my responsibility. And if anything were to happen to him, how I would go about the rest of my life. Like, I don't know how I would live with myself if something happened to Bogey because of myself. I don't believe that you are a better bird owner or a worse bird owner if you don't take your bird outside. I don't think that that's true. I know social media can kind of make that narrative a thing and I don't agree with it. Um, is it amazing? Yes. Does it inspire people to let their birds wings grow out? Yes, which is amazing. I'm very much for fully flighted birds. I'm, I'm not specifically fond of clipping at all. I'm really not fond of it unless a bird has some sort of disability and needs to be clipped. His first flight, I literally had to take tequila shots, which probably wasn't the best choice, but I had so many people around me. We were super prepared. Bogey had passed all of his recall, recall training perfectly. My biggest fear was like some external factor that could hurt Bogey, like some predator that was just waiting for him to fly. And then, However, that didn't happen. Um, his first few flights were awesome and it was one of the best days of my life seeing him out there. Have I had any close calls? Yes, it's horrible. It's embarrassing. We could go to this park by ourselves and that's a great idea, right? Wrong. I had no support. My free flight group wasn't there. Um, I flew Bogey around this park a few times and I noticed Bogey's body, like, Bogey's body language changed in the ever tiniest, tiniest way. It's like he got a little tight and his eyes kind of bulged. It's this weird thing where I can tell he's scared. A hawk flew down and swooped us and before Bogey could fly off, cause that's normal, birds are gonna fly when they're scared, I grabbed him and I was like shaking and I just remember calling my mom or it was either my mom or my husband and they were like, this needs to be your learning lesson. Like, you can't take Bogey out by yourself ever again. So anyway, that was my close call. It was really humbling and 
free flight is just very humbling to me in general. It's like, it's not something that I take lightly. And it's not something that I expect everyone to do to be this amazing bird owner. Do gauze make good pets compared to other parrot species? I, I wouldn't say so. I would not say that gauze make good pets. If you're willing to change your expectations, I think having a gauze pet is manageable and it can be really fun and obviously, oh good boy, Bogey. Bogey pooped, so let's get him a treat. I just think you need to almost be like a parrot enthusiast to be able to happily get along with a gaw. There you go, Bo. That's, that's kind of, and you know what? Let me know in the comments, maybe I'm wrong, but that's just been my experience. Someone said, are you worried about Bo? Are you worried about how Bo will act around the baby? I kind of addressed it, but yeah, I'm a little worried. It's not something that I'm gonna, I'm not gonna just let Bogey like hang out with the baby without me. <clears throat> it's gonna be one of those things that I'm like constantly monitoring and just making sure everything's cool and kind of creating a training program, so to speak, to make sure that I'm in control of the situation and things don't get out of hand ever, 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 ever. Because I don't want to endanger Bogey or the baby, especially the baby, because Bogey would probably be fine. My bird bites when he doesn't want to stop eating cables. Uh, yep, <laughs> that sounds about right. So what I would say to that person is stop letting your bird eat your cables. So that means you either hide the cables or put them in a spot that your bird can't chew. Don't have your bird out um, when your cables are out. Uh, you gotta just change that antecedent before the behavior happens. Someone asked, are you spoiled? Is that a bogey question or a me question? How am I feeling? That's very sweet. I am feeling a lot better. The first trimester of this pregnancy was horrible. I was miserable. I was throwing up every day. I had to go to the ER because I was having such bad cramping. I thought the baby was either, uh, I thought the pregnancy was an ectopic pregnancy or that it was miscarrying. And it was very unsettling because I couldn't figure out my emotions. I didn't know if I should be happy or really sad because I didn't want to get attached and then have it be a miscarriage. So it was, it was a really challenging first trimester. And now that I'm in the second trimester, everything is a lot better. I'm, I sprained my groin. I tried to play baseball and sprint, which was really dumb. So the only physical issue is that I kind of have pain <laughs> in my leg slash groin. But other than that, I've been sleeping well. I can eat everything I want, unlike the first trimester when I was throwing up. And I just take naps when I'm tired and keep my feet up to prevent my ankles from sweat swelling. So someone asked, how are you going to introduce Bogey to the baby? We have a Gala and a seven month old daughter. Tips are welcome. So with parrots, you wanna do things gradually. You wanna make things uh, their choice as well as your choice. So the, this is a hard one because I'm, I'm obviously still trying to figure this one out too, but Try to frame things in a way where you could be like, how can I be in control of this situation, but give my parrot the choice to either stay or flee the situation. So you don't wanna force your bird on your seven month year old, and it might scare your seven month year old. You don't wanna force either of the two together. I think having the seven month year old out and maybe doing a really positive fun activity with your bird, um, like some tricks, some training, some treats, maybe they get fed somewhere around the baby, not super close to the baby because we don't want aggression to take place if the bird feels threatened about his food, resource guards the food or whatnot. But um, yeah, my overarching advice is just that you want to do things in a slow, controlled way. And you want to give the parrot choice. So hopefully the parrot's wings aren't clipped so if it is scared, especially with toddlers, I always see this with toddlers, it's like so important to understand the parrot's body language so that you know if they feel threatened, if they feel scared, if they feel like they're you know, heightened or whatever we wanna call it, you can safely remove the bird and um, or they can remove themselves. I hope that answers the question. It's a, it's a hard question to answer because I have yet to experience it. Does Bogey like children? Bo I used to be a nanny for a really long time and Bogey was around those kids a lot. Bogey doesn't like 
a lot of people other than Scotty and I, and he like he does prefer women over men. But he was fine with the kids. We just had really strict rules. No shoulders, no putting bogey up to your face. And you could basically hold bogey like this. And if it was okay with me, they could do tricks with bogey. So those were our, we just had very, very strict rules just to keep them safe as well as bogey safe. Does bogey know when you're sad? What is his behavior? Kisses from Spain. But does Bogey know when I'm sad? I'm sure he knows, because if I'm sad, like maybe I'm crying or I'm not like my bubbly self, but <laughs> I like look out for Bogey when I'm sad because he's like, would probably bite me if I was crying. <laughs> like, that's what I'm saying. Birds are not, birds are not like domesticated animals that we're used to. If anything, the crying would be like, he'd be like, what's, what's, I'm anthropomorphizing it, but it's like, what are you doing? Why are you, why is water coming out of your eyes? Can I lick it? I don't think Bogey would especially feel any type of way towards me to comfort me because I'm sad. What is his behavior? I mean, I'm sure he'd bite me if I'm sad. He'd ask for head rubs when I'm sad, like all the same stuff. Nothing would really change if I was crying or sad. It's not like a dog that will like, come cuddle you because they see that you're sad. It's very different for bird. Someone asked me about baby names. I do not have a baby name yet. Even if I did have a baby name, I'm probably not gonna tell y'all because I don't want everyone's opinions. I already have enough of that with my family and friends <laughs> and I love them, but naming a human is very difficult. I had a hard enough time naming Bogey. Now I'm supposed to name a human being with everyone being like, don't name him that. This guy from high school did this to me 20 years ago. And it's like, oh my gosh. So I have like three names, but they're a secret. All right, you guys, it's getting dark. I have probably gone way over the time that I was supposed to. Um, but he doesn't really want to be in the outro. I hope I answered your questions. If there's more questions, please put them in the comments. And don't forget to check out our new website nerdybirdcollective.com and you can actually chat with us right there. You can email me there, put in the subject line, attention Emily. You can always directly message me on Instagram and I will always get back to you guys. Thank you so much and I hope y'all have a great, great night and I'm not sure why I keep saying y'all because it's easier than saying you all, but have a great night. <laughs>